Miller Racing Team seems content on taking their time and naming a replacement for Phil Parsons. Ernie Irvin will be the driver of the Kodak Film Oldsmobile in Atlanta, but it appears likely that Dale Jarrett, Tommy Ellis, and Hutch Strickland will all be considered for the full-time job. One thing that is certain, Buddy Baker's on the comeback trail. He'll also be in Atlanta driving a Ford Thunderbird owned by Junie Donlevy. For now, Tommy Ellis is concentrating fully on his Bush Grand National schedule. He was the pole sitter here in Martinsville, Virginia, and he's also the defending race winner of the Miller Classic. Today's Bush Grand National highlights are brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? After drastically changing his car setup before the race, Ellis still took charge from the very beginning. Through the first eight caution periods that slowed the race for 39 laps, Ellis was in a league by himself, stretching his lead to as much as eight seconds. Bobby Hamilton and Jimmy Hensley were his nearest competition. The two would run up front all day. Harry Gant was involved in an early race incident that would eventually take the Skull Buick out of contention. Another early front runner, Robert Presley, suffered engine problems that relegated him to a 26th place finish. Two younger brothers of Winston Cup stars suffered different fates on this day. Kenny Wallace, younger brother of Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace, was forced to the sidelines with an overheating car, and not even Rusty's expert advice could solve the problem. Todd Bodine, younger brother of Jeff and Brett Bodine, ran his first race ever in the Bush ranks and stayed in the top 10 all day. On lap 174, with Ellis still coasting around the half-mile oval, the word came. The leader's brakes were gone. Elton Sawyer seized the opportunity and quickly went by Ellis, who would finish ninth. We're just so disappointed for his sponsors and their corners and the crew that works hard because it's... Uh... It's awful disappointing to be out there and run that good and just be sitting there riding, taking it easy, and all of a sudden you're, not, you're no longer competitive. The final caution of the day came out several laps later when Ward Burton spun on the backstretch. On the ensuing restart, Sawyer, looking for his first Bush win, slowed when he saw a yellow light still flashing from the previous caution. That split-second bobble allowed Tommy Houston to slip by for the lead. Dale Jarrett went with Houston and began to challenge him. Elton Sawyer finally got back up to speed and passed Jarrett for second place, but it was Tommy Houston who claimed his 20th career win, avenging some unlucky Martinsville finishes of the past. In the fall race two years ago, ran out of gas, uh, coming to the white flag, leading the race strong, and then, you know, last year we ran second here, and in the fall race we lost the championship here, running, I think, fifth in the race and going good. And, uh, you know, but... It does. What goes around comes around. And, you know, thank the good Lord for a safe race, and it just seems like things like that work out. Tommy Ellis started from the pole and served notice early on that he was going to dominate. Several times, Ellis built up three and four second leads and looked to be on his way to another easy win at the track. But just 26 laps from the end, Ellis ran out of brakes and finished ninth. That opened the door for a hard-charging Elton Sawyer, who had started 14th, but clearly had the second strongest car behind Ellis. Sawyer assumed the point and looked to be a sure winner until Ward Burton brought out the ninth and final caution of the day on lap 178. When they went back to green 16 laps from the end, Sawyer pulled away through one and two, then slowed dramatically down the backstretch, allowing Tommy Houston and Dale Jarrett to get around. When I was just entering turn one, the caution light was still on, and I just I thought maybe a car got together behind us, and uh, you know the caution was still out, and I just kind of got out of throttle. And uh, when I went down the back straightaway, and I, mean, I was still kind of waving the guys off like we had a caution. I guess they thought I was waving them by because they just blowed by me. Sawyer was able to hunt down Jarrett and push his way around into second place. And while he made it a close finish, Houston held him off for the win. By winning this early in the season, this is something we failed to do in quite a few years. It seems like it's always in June before we'll get the first win under our belt. Once it comes, things go pretty good. Jarrett finished third to take over the BGN points lead. Jimmy Hensley came home fourth while Bobby Hamilton finished fifth. John Kernan reporting for Speedweek.